Yes, it's a good okay. speech. Yep. Okay, so if you can, for the Lucid chart, uh, you can go to the website Lucid dot app. Okay. Lucid, uh, L U C I D, Lucid. Uh, L U I C I D app. Okay, so maybe yeah. So, but this is wrong. Maybe not. It's not Lucid app. It is Lucid. L U C I D. L U C I D. Lucid app. Yes. So it has gone to this uh, website. So when you will type this Lucid dot app, it will ask you to uh, join their. Uh, uh, network okay so you can create your uh, free account i already have my free uh, account there so basically this uh, lucid app is something like uh, uh, visio uh, that type of program and you can plot uh, you can draw different uh, figures uh, very conveniently Okay, uh, so one of the figure which you can draw very conveniently is the network uh, diagram. Okay, so maybe uh, when you open this uh, Lucid chart, uh, uh, this Lucid dot app uh, website. Uh, now, if you will set up your account, then you can create some new. Uh, different things so you can create some new lucid uh, chart uh, document okay so when you create this lucid chart document it will open with you uh, with this uh, work screen uh, okay it will open with you with this work screen and the on this workspace you can add different uh, shapes okay something like this yeah so you can add different shapes okay so if for example if you want to plot uh, draw the, uh, the network uh, diagram so for example using this data okay so uh, Maybe then you can uh, copy this figure in over to the over this here. So insert uh, image and uh, maybe or maybe I can just uh, see the edit and then I can just paste. It asked me to do like control V if I, I have copied figure from my PowerPoint. Yeah, uh, earlier I have copied figure from my PowerPoint over here. I then I can now, uh, I have now added this figure in over here. Okay, so and I, now I can easily refer to this uh, data and to plot my network diagram, okay. So for the network diagram, uh, I need some sort of uh, boxes, okay? So for this, the boxes, uh, the uh, these boxes which you use is the, uh, in this case, uh, for example, uh, yeah, you can, I can use some simple type of boxes over here. So for example, even the shapes or even I can, add some more shapes uh, for example uh, for example tables okay the, yeah tables are more like the uh, shapes of those uh, activities so for example if i in the inside of the table i take this shape which are something like quite uh, formatted so for example this shape if I add over here. So then I can use uh, in this uh, shape, I, ha I have six different uh, small boxes. And then these small boxes, uh, these six different small boxes I can use for uh, the 
uh, information about the activity. So for example, here I can put the activity ID as one. Here I can put the activity uh, duration as something like three. Here I can use this one. Uh, uh, these four corners I can use for the uh, activity start and finish time, which uh, I will introduce uh, to you formally in, in my next uh, topic. And here I can in introduce it for the uh, late uh, portal float, free float, etc. So this uh, type of uh, uh, shape, which can be very easily obtained uh, in this lucid chart is uh, very uh, useful. But here I just want to plot the, uh, uh, here I just want to draw the, um, what you say is the um, network diagram only. Okay. Uh, here I just want to plot the network diagram only. So maybe I can just take uh, a maybe another figure. Okay. So in this case, maybe I can change it. Yeah, and then I can delete it. So for example, if it is the uh, gathered data, so now I think a lot of space have been taken by, uh, by this. Maybe I can take this box and uh, yeah, take this box over here, or maybe here or there, okay, it depends here. Sometimes the space, managing of the space becomes difficult. So I can take this box. So this box is for uh, gather, uh, gather data, okay? So this gather data is showing the activity, gather data and then uh, study feasibility, okay? So study, So the next activity is, yeah, study feasibility. Study feasibility. Because you can see that there are no immediately preceding activities. However, uh, prepare problem definition report uh, one and two are the preceding activities. So therefore, uh, next activity is, so maybe I can copy and then paste. Yeah. So just I copy and paste this box and then I can put it like here. But now here, uh, this is the uh, prepare problem definition report, okay? So this is prepare problem definition uh, report. Uh, prepare problem definition report, okay? Mm, so R capital, D capital, problem definition report. And now here it is the uh, good advantage. The good advantage is that you can connect these boxes by these professional looking arrows. So you can see that it is now very clearly showing that uh, and uh, this prepare problem definition report is the activity over here. And then these are followed by the gathered data. So you can draw this uh, network diagram in quite a professional uh, way, in an organized way. Uh, then let's, let's complete this diagram first. Uh, interview users. 
uh, is by prepare problem definition. So interview users is the next activity. So I copy it and then paste it. Okay, here. And then another interview. Yeah, another. Yeah, in this case, I get it like this. Maybe I can make it a little bit more space. Um, yeah, and then now I can join it like this. So, no. So, so you will you, you will take your cursor near that uh, near these dots and then you can join them. Okay, so it's like that. So study feasibility. Uh, so the uh, this is this was the activity interview users. Interview users. Okay. And then this is the study feasibility. Study feasibility, no, it was study existing systems. Study existing system. Okay. And uh, for example, gather data was uh, the activity. Uh, gather data was this activity. It was activity one, right? And uh, uh, study feasibility was activity two. Okay, so now it makes it more clear. Okay, then prepare uh, problem definition report is activity three. Okay, so now you can see that three has one and two as predecessors. So in terms of these numbers, it is easier to uh, make a sense of it. Three is preceded by one and two, okay? Uh, next is uh, interview users. So this was uh, four, okay? And then uh, study existing system. Uh, this was five. Okay. Uh, after that, there is the define user requirement that is four. Okay. So which is for uh, preceded by define user requirement is uh, six is preceded by four. So define user requirement. So define user requirement. So uh, yeah. So I copied and paste this box and then I placed it here. So this is the uh, define the user requirements. Requirements. So this is the uh, which number activity? Activity number six. Okay. Define user requirements. But activity number six is uh, uh, after four. So I can place from here and and I, play, I can place an uh, arrow from here to there. Okay, so due to lack of space, I am just uh, putting these very, or maybe if I can, uh, yeah, so now this is uh, this arrow I can. What I can do, I can make this arrow again. Yeah, okay, define user requirements. Mm -hmm. And so after that, there is prepare system design report. 
Okay, prepared system design report. So the next box is control C, control V, system design report. Yeah, so system design uh, prepare system uh, prepare system design report. Okay, so it is uh, the repair. Uh, system design report okay prepare system design report and this is the activity number define user requirements and now this is the define user requirement then this is the prepare system analysis report okay prepare system analysis report Prepare system analysis report. So uh, it is activity number seven, and uh, seven is has the predecessor as five and six. So from five, yeah, I can place this arrow, and then from six, I can place this arrow. Okay, so five and six. So now I have completed up to this and then we need to add some more. Uh, then input and, uh, uh, and output. Input and output. So control C, control V. So I can place it like here, input. So this is the input. So this is the activity number eight. Okay. Input and output. Okay. Input and output. This is activity number eight. And then I have the processing and database. Processing and database. So here, I have to undo it. So processing in database, processing and database, processing and and processing and database yeah so this is activity number um, nine processing and database activity number nine so both are following activity number seven okay so from seven and then here and then also from here, okay, input processing and database. So similarly, uh, then uh, you can add it, evaluation, prepare systems, design, and then uh, in this same way, then you can continue and then you can complete the product. Uh, Uh, I think if the space, maybe if the space is uh, some issue, then maybe you can just uh, like what you say is maybe what you can do. One of the issue may be the space. So for example, uh, you may have more boxes. So what you can do is uh, you can continue it until the end of the uh, slide and then you can discontinue it and then start the next uh, 
uh, part of the network from here. You can start the net next part of the network from here. So in this way, then maybe you can uh, complete this network into uh, one uh, in, in the one full space of the worksheet. Or maybe you can just uh, select these all, and uh, maybe you can also reduce their size. You can reduce their size like this. In this way, somehow these uh, uh, fonts may be uh, coming out. So maybe, but you can reduce the fonts as well. So you can see that there is a lot of uh, flexibility in this case. Okay. And, if, and in this case, for example, if you if I take this uh, network node over here and I expand it and its arrow also expands with that. So there is a lot of uh, flexibility in this case. So with this uh, flexibility, then you can uh, very conveniently draw the uh, network diagram uh, for very professionally on on the computer screen, and then maybe you can also uh, save it for your uh, later use. So, for example, in this uh, uh, file, and then if you want to save it, okay, you can save it. You can save it as a blank document. Maybe you can save it as a um, network chart. Okay, you can check the network chart. Yeah, so it it has saved into your uh, uh, Lucid account. If you want, you can also uh, export it. So you can export it like what PDF, uh, JPEG, uh, whatever format that you want. So for example, if you want to export as a um, PDF, then it will be like that. So, and then that PDF you can download on your hard disk. Okay. So, this was some uh, demonstration about the uh, Lucid chart. So, is it clear? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's clear. Uh, Okay. So uh, later on this uh, Lucy, uh, this network diagram, of course, uh, when it is uh, uh, it is useful, uh, you can use different types of, for example, as I have said that. Uh, these kind of boxes can be used, and then these moments once you when you plot this diagram, then you can input the numbers into the diagrams, and then you can perform the forward and backward, backward pass uh, calculations. Okay, so uh, now, uh, do you have any problem with the access to the software? Uh, the uh, Microsoft project. Uh, yes, Professor. Uh, yes, what is the problem? I, uh, I cannot connect. I cannot connect to the Microsoft project via remote remote control too. Oh, okay, you cannot connect it. Okay, so maybe I can demonstrate it, how to connect. Okay, so I think they have provided us some uh, instructions. Uh, here, what is the instruction? So yeah, it's an instruction for remote access to Microsoft uh, soft project, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, you have to go to this uh, HTTPS. 
okay and uh, then just uh, okay paste it and then this uh, link will open so just uh, there are two things to uh, consider just forget about this left side click this right side vmware horizon html access click it here uh, enter your username uh, your username is your uh, your end use uh, username okay so i hope everyone have uh, has your username right so, yes yes okay let me see whether the username is uh, full email address or just the username yeah is the uh, just the username not like at email so yeah so you enter your username and your uh, password which you use for uh, moodle uh, okay this is the pass this is your moodle password or other uh, uh, the password to uh, get your connect to your registrar this is not your email password okay it is your network password then you will click login so after you will login then you will see these different uh, rooms so these are basically your labs physical labs so for example there is this physical lab in our campus 3323 3, which is in which is located in block 3 uh, floor 3 and room 323 right uh, so this is the lab there will be a number of computers so now if you will click over here then you can connect to the computers in this lab so uh, for our Microsoft project, the uh, information technology department has asked us to connect to NUVDI desktops. So you have to click over here, NUVDI desktops. So click over here. And now you can see that I have been uh, logged in to the uh, remote desktop. Okay, can you see it? Yeah, can anyone see that this might take several minutes, something like don't turn off your PC, something like that. Yes, we can see. Yeah, so that means I have, I have been connected to, uh, remotely to the uh, desktop computer, okay? Okay, so now it uh, it has been done. Uh, it is some message, uh, not restart. Okay, just ignore it. And uh, now I have been to the remote computer. So there, in this remote desktop, then I think what I want to use the program is project. So project uh, 2016. Yeah, they have installed the Microsoft Project 2016 program. So just open it and here uh, now uh, you can use uh, now you can use uh, this microsoft project 2019 so well first things first okay just accept it okay so in this way you can use the microsoft project so if you will try it in this way, I think it should work. So anyone having a problem like working like this? So I hope not now yes, this time. Uh, yes, sir. I think uh, this reboot desktop that uh, need a, a very uh, strong internet connection, but in my case, I don't have that connection. And when I connect it, it will just pop up and then reconnect and it will disconnect once again. Mm, yeah, so the problem is because of your internet connection. Uh, then I think in that case, um, you can use some 
of your some of the way to get your uh, to get the local copy of that uh, software installed on your computer so yeah if your connection is not strong then maybe uh, you can try to install a local copy on this on your computer but uh, unfortunately we cannot provide you the license so you have to do by yourself um, how you can do it that is uh, that is up to you i mean yeah on, on the internet on the internet yes you can do it uh, but uh, uh, that is something which i uh, i cannot suggest okay okay so uh uh, yeah, so if you have some so that issue, then you can ask me uh, later as well. Anyway, so this is the way how to connect the uh, Microsoft project. And uh, uh, so when you can, when you start work on this Microsoft project, so you can see that uh, this software has uh, uh, an interface, uh, which is a little bit uh, different from the uh, other uh, Microsoft programs such as Microsoft Word and Excel, okay? Uh, so because it is related with the uh, projects, so it's not like uh, Office uh, and the general Office uh, document. So if, uh, let me to illustrate how to start with it, uh, let me, show you the show you some uh, worked example if you see uh, page 118 yeah uh, on page 118 uh, there is this uh, figure 4.5 uh, on on your textbook uh, the a work breakdown structure for the consumer market study project has been uh, mentioned over here. So, for example, if you want to uh, develop a work breakdown structure on the Microsoft project, uh, what you do is uh, you Uh, develop the uh, project first. Okay, so first of all, we have to enter the uh, project information. So for example, over here is file. And uh, maybe you can uh, save the project. Or in the info, maybe you can also select the project information over here. Uh, advanced properties. And in the advanced properties, you will have this uh, uh, dialog box here you can enter the information for the project okay so summary project one and then i don't know giving my name over here as well uh, okay statistics and like that so the project information you can enter here but anyway uh, you can first save the project okay so for example browse and then you can save the project uh, and the sub project name is customer customer uh, market study okay customer market study okay so i can save this project so generally when you save the project file so the uh, when the you save the project file the name of the file appears here on, in the title bar over here okay so uh, there's this timeline view we don't need to show it maybe i can just uh, hide it here to in increase my workspace over here so here you can see that in this pro uh, microsoft project uh, interface uh, there are uh, certain information this side of area is the uh, activity entry table okay and on that side uh, the of the uh, software interface there is this uh, area which is called as the gantt chart area 
So in fact, in at this point, I don't need this uh, Gantt chart area much. So I can just show you more about the activity entrance area. So once uh, when you have decided the first uh, the uh, when you have saved the project as the project file name over here, uh, then uh, what you can do is. Uh, uh, one thing which we can do is we can go to this uh, project tab and uh, enter some project uh, information okay so there is a uh, for, for entering the project information the, the most basic information which you can get uh, which you can enter is the uh, starting date of the project okay so <laughs> If you want to schedule the project from the start, so you have to enter the starting date of the project because there is no project which is without a starting date and an ending date, okay? So maybe uh, in this case, uh, we, we are planning that we are going to start the project on 1st of March. So I select 1st of March, 2021, and then we are scheduling from the project start date. And when the project will finish, that I think uh, that the pro uh, program will work. Okay, so just select the starting date and then leave the calendar as standard and just click OK. So this will, uh, in a way, will show that we are going to plan the project. Okay, next thing is uh, now I want to uh, develop the work breakdown structure for this project. Okay, for this, uh, for developing the work breakdown structure of this project, uh, I uh, have this uh, type of uh, sketch of the work breakdown structure, which is available on page 118 of the textbook. So this textbook, you can, of course, uh, you see from the, uh, the link which has been provided to you. Okay, can you see this uh, work breakdown structure, customer market study? Yes. Uh, okay. So, uh, but because I want to keep it open on my screen, on my second screen, so that's why I'm going to remove it. Anyway, so now if we if we want to set up this uh, work breakdown structure over here uh, in the Microsoft project, uh, then what I need to do is I I need to click this uh, uh, format. Uh, uh, menu over here. So there are certain menus, file, okay, which takes you to the commands such as new, save, etc. Uh, there are tasks, so which are the which will take uh, to the uh, to the commands related to the tasks and resources for the resources, report for creating different reports, project the information which is uh, related to the whole project different views and then in the end format in the format there is uh, this uh, uh, here is that whether we want to include the uh, uh, summary tasks and the project summary tasks so i uh, summary tasks has been already selected over here by default maybe you can select the project summary task as well okay so i can select the project summary task so since uh, when I click the project summary task, so there will automatically, there will be a task that will be generated, which will be called as the customer market study. So which is basically, uh, basically, which is our, which is our, uh, the whole project. So under this whole project, uh, I have now uh, two uh, work, uh, work packages. Okay, so you can see that customer market study, I have two work packages, uh, questionnaire and report. Okay, two work, and under the questionnaire, I have the design and, uh, re uh, and responses. And under the report, I have the software and the report. So this type of structure we, I have to produce in the, uh, have to produce in the Microsoft project. So under the customer market survey, I have this uh, questionnaire. Questionnaire. Okay. 
And uh, under the questionnaire, I have design. And under the design, I have uh, uh, identify, identity, identify target customers. Identify, identify uh, target customers. Customers. Okay. Here you can see that the customer market study is the main project. Under that project, uh, questionnaire is a, a uh, you can say as the uh, deliverable. And under the question uh, deliverable, there is a sub deliverable, which is called as the design. Or in other case, this, the design is uh, the work package. And under the work package, you have the uh, activity identify, uh, identify target customers, okay? Identify target uh, customers, so spell check and then use a consistent uh, capitalization okay identify uh, target customer but when i say it is under this so how i can say that it is under this uh, you can see that this questionnaire is under this product uh, because as you can see that the customer is starting uh, the c of the customer is starting from here but the q of the customer is starting a little bit front uh, after that so that means it has already been uh, indented over here. Or And if I click this small arrow over here, then I can see that everything will hide under the customer market study. So that means everything which is entered over here is included into this uh, project. Okay, but for this design, when, when I say that the design is part of the questionnaire, uh, then that is not shown over here. So, so in order to show this design as the past, as the part of the questionnaire, as the sub uh, deliverable of the questionnaire, so I have to go to this task menu and then I need to click this indent button over here. When I click the indent button here, so design will move towards right. And then you can see that the questionnaire now become also uh, in bold letters, and then there is this uh, arrow over here as well. So if I click this arrow over here, then I, you can see that the, this uh, questionnaire list will uh, collapse into that, right? So this means that now design is part of the uh, questionnaire. And similarly, when I said that the identify target customers is the part of the questionnaire, so then that means it should be should come under the design. So therefore, I will need to uh, indent it two times. One time, so one time I indent it, then it is now part of the questionnaire. But another time I will indent it, then it will be part of the design over here. Okay. So similarly, the design has four more activities: uh, develop, develop, draft questionnaire questionnaire and uh, yeah so now i can see that it is taking the uh, formatting from the uh, upper part and then it is automatically putting it into this software so in this way we are uh, creating the work breakdown uh, structure into the uh, microsoft project and the microsoft project's uh, work breakdown structure format is uh, using the indentation uh, technique. Okay. Uh, the next is the uh, pilot uh, pilot test pilot test questionnaire pilot test questionnaire. Okay. Next is renew uh, review review com, uh, review Review comments and review comments and uh, finalize questionnaire. Okay. Review comments and finalize questionnaire. And the last activity is develop software test data. Develop 
soft where test data okay. so in this way uh, and this design uh, work package uh, has been represented over here design work package has the five activities so now the questionnaire has has the another uh, work package which was the responses as well Res Responses. So now I will add the responses. So the system will take it as a as an activity of the design, but responses is a separate work package under the questionnaire. So therefore, I I will need to outdent it. Okay, I will click this uh, left side arrow, and then I will outdent it. So in this case, now responses is at the same level as the design, and under the responses, now I have three activities: print. Questionnaire. Okay, and now in, I can indent it over here. Yeah, so now you can see that the responses is, is now the uh, work package. Print questionnaire, prepare marking labels, prepare marking labels, and then mail questionnaire and get resources responses responses okay so these are the three activities under the responses so so the questionnaire has uh, two uh, work packages, design and responses. But the uh, customer market study has also an another uh, sub, another deliverable that was the report. Okay, so report. So that report is at the, at the same level. It should be at the same level as the questionnaire. So I will outdent it four times, uh, two times. Sorry. I will outdent it two times. So report is at the same level as the questionnaire. And under the report, as you can see that from here, I let me show you again. So yeah, so under uh, the report is under the customer market study. Okay. And then under the report, you have the software and the uh, report again as the uh, deliverables. So in this case, report and under the report i have the software okay software and then i will indent it okay and then i have uh, under the software i have the activities develop develop data analysis software okay and then test software so these are the three activities uh, so uh, uh, these are the two activities under the software okay so since these are the two activities under the software i can just uh, select these two activities and then i can click this indent button and then i will get it uh, and the other uh, sub uh, deliverable was a report. Okay. So that is the uh, report under the uh, report. Okay. Report under the report. Okay. And then this for this, there are three activities input. Remember that the uh, by convention we are starting any activity with the with the verb. So, for example, identify. Okay, identify uh, over here. Okay, and develop pilot test review. So this is the uh, action verb. So we are starting the activity by the action verb. Okay, so. So to just collect these 
identify i was just correct, uh, making the correction for this spelling identify target customers so uh, for the report input input uh, response data uh, analyze results and then uh, prepare report so these are the three uh, activities under the report so in this way what i get over here is like this okay so here i can see uh, that uh, uh, this is the uh, work breakdown structure of this project so if i want to collapse the whole work breakdown structure so i if I just want to show show only the uh, deliverables and the work packages, so then I can show it like this. Okay, so it's, I can see that this project has two main deliverables: questionnaire and the report, and the four work packages: design and responses, which are under the questionnaire deliverable, report and software, which are under the uh, report. Uh, uh, deliverable okay and uh, then if i want to for, uh, fully expand it so then i can see that uh, there are certain activities under uh, each work package so for example under the work package design there are five activities uh, and under the responses uh, work package uh, there are three activities under the uh, software work package there are two activities under the report work package there are three activities. Okay, so uh, at this point uh, now, and the work package has been clear, uh, entered. Uh, I want to enter two more things. Uh, the predecessor information, uh, as uh, the predecessor information, that means uh, which uh, work package uh, follows, uh, sorry, which activity follows which activity. So. Uh, in this case, uh, we need to uh, sequence the uh, activities. So for sequencing the activities, we need to identify the uh, predecessors, okay? So in this case, uh, for, for identification of the predecessors, it is found that the uh, developed draft questionnaire can be uh, on uh, cannot be started until identified target customers has not been completed. So uh, we will say that it has the develop uh, a draft questionnaire will have the uh, predecessor as identified target customers. But how we, we say that uh, uh, how to put it? So we will just simply put the uh, this number so these numbers are important over here so three four so zero has been shown for the project one has been shown for the questionnaire two has been shown for the design three has been shown for the identity five target customer so if i want to say that uh, ident uh, identify target customers is the predecessor of the developed uh, draft questionnaire so i can just put a number three over here so this will uh, mean that uh, draft, uh, developed draft questionnaire will only start after the identified target customer has been uh, completed. Uh, similarly, pilot uh, uh, test questionnaire can only start when the draft has been completed. So in this case, I will put the number four over here because four is the, uh, four is now the predece uh, predecessor of activity uh, five. Similarly, review uh, comments and finalize questionnaire can only be done when pilot quest questionnaire has been completed. So we will put five over here. And the develop software test data. So 
So the developed software test uh, data can be completed when review, comments, and the finalized uh, questionnaire has been completed. So therefore, we can put uh, six over here. So remember that these predecessors, we only have to uh, specify for the uh, activities. Uh, these other activities uh, which are shown in the uh, bold, uh, these are the summary activities. So the summary activities are uh, calculated uh, based on the uh, based, uh, based on these tasks, okay? Based on these original tasks, okay? So, so we don't enter any uh, in, uh, information about the summary activities other than that uh, these are the summary activities of the uh, some other uh, activities. So the predecessor activities, uh, predecessor information is only mentioned for the uh, uh, activities, okay? Not for the work package, which in, in this uh, case for the Microsoft product is the, uh, is the task itself, but that is the summary task. Uh, next, we have to enter the predecessor for the print questionnaire. So questionnaire can be printed uh, when, uh, uh, questionnaire when, can be printed when the uh, review comments and the finalized questionnaire has been completed. So uh, six will be the predecessor. Uh, okay. And then uh, prepare uh, marking uh, labels. Uh, prepare marking labels can be completed also uh, when review comments and finalized questionnaire has been completed. So six is also there. Uh, mail questionnaire and get responses. So questionnaires can be mailed only. Uh, questionnaires can be mailed only when questionnaires have been printed and the mailing labels have been completed, okay? So we first we have to create uh, mm, uh, Hello, sir. Uh, yes. Yeah, um, for the print questionnaire, you said um, it could commence after review and um, um, after review comment has been completed and review comment is um, the fifth activity. Uh, review, uh, no, uh, review comments is represented by this six. Uh, six, yes, six. So that's why uh, we will put six, okay? Oh, okay, yes, I just yeah. saw that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think this is the most tedious part uh, for a Microsoft project. Uh, when you when we enter the data okay so <laughs> often we can get confused and then uh, you know, like that so this is the most tedious part okay uh, next is the uh, mail questionnaire and the get responses can on only be performed uh, when the uh, mailing uh, prepare mailing labels have been completed so prepare mailing labels is uh, number 10 and another thing on which mail questionnaire and get responses depends is the printing of the questionnaire when the questionnaire has been printed. So printing of the question. Uh, so let me see this again. A mail questionnaire and get responses. Uh, mail questionnaire and get responses can be only prepared uh, when uh, uh, questionnaire has been printed. Uh, yes, when the questionnaire has been printed, then that means uh, it is uh, uh, number nine, right? And when uh, prepare the mail uh, mailing labels, uh, prepare the mark uh, mailing labels or marking labels. Okay, prepare the mailing labels is number 10. Yeah. So yeah, here I can make some correction. It is the mailing label, not marking labels. M-A-I-L, mailing labels. 
So uh, nine and ten. So in this case, you can see that uh, mailing of the questionnaire depends on these three two previous activities, and then these two predecessors have been uh, separated by uh, commas over here. So now we have left with these uh, five activities. Okay, uh, develop data analysis software. So how we can develop the uh, data analysis software? Only when the review comments and the finalized questionnaire has been completed. So that is six. So review comments and the finalized question. So review comments and the finalized questionnaire is a very important activity because many other activities are depending on this activity. Okay, uh, the next is the uh, test software. So how the software can be tested? So of course, when the software can be tested only when uh, uh, when uh, then develop software test data has been completed. That is the software test data has been developed. Okay, so it means uh, number seven and sorry, number seven over here. And then another is that when the uh, data analysis software has been developing, developed. Okay, so only when they, then we can develop it. So then it will be uh, 14 over here. Okay, so uh, report. So for the report, uh, input response data. That means uh, when we can start uh, inputting the response data. So we can start inputting the response data only after uh, mail questionnaire and get responses have been completed. Only after getting the responses, we have we can start inputting the data. So mail, so that means uh, uh, this activity, 11. And then further, it depends on the, uh, when the software has already been, software testing has already been completed. So after completion of the software testing. Uh, uh, next is the uh, analysis of the result. So, of course, the analysis of the result can be only be done when we have already completed inputting the data. So, uh, that means it will be 17, and then it will be uh, prepare the report. Uh, prepare the report can only be prepared when the data has been analyzed. So, then that means it will be 18. Okay, so this is the predecessor information which has already been entered now. Uh, the next information which uh, I can add uh, today uh, is that, and then the later for the later information we will keep it for uh, the next one, is the uh, who is responsible for uh, uh, which tasks. So for this, I think you can just uh, look at again this uh, uh, sketch of the uh, in this work breakdown structure. So you can see that the customer uh, market study uh, uh, Jim was responsible. Okay. And then the questionnaire Susan was responsible and for the responses Steve was responsible uh, like that. So, uh, so maybe I can enter this information over here for the resource name. Okay. So for the resource name. So for the design tasks uh, for, for the activities under the design tasks and uh, the resource name is susan 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 or susan or whatever okay susan okay susan 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 okay and uh, for the uh, responses, Steve was the response, Steve, Steve. So this you can enter quickly. Okay, so now for the software, Andy, and Andy, okay. And uh, for the report, Jim, Jim. Jim, okay, Jim is responsible. Uh, so overall for the report, uh, that means overall for the uh, report, 
uh, what I can put is uh, Jim was responsible. Okay. And for the software, Andy was responsible. And for the report, uh, Jim was responsible. And for the responses, Steve was responsible. And for the for the design, Susan was responsible. And uh, for the questionnaire, overall, Susan was responsible. And for the project overall, Jim was responsible. Okay. Uh, but here I, yeah, um, it is giving us an error because uh, I earlier uh, uh, selected this activity as the um, summary activity. So, so to make to mark a resource as a budget or resource, go to the resource sheet and get the budget field tools. So therefore, uh, maybe, okay, so maybe I can uh, just uh, ignore it, okay? At this point. So here I can see that now all these uh, response uh, uh, resources have been added. But uh, just like as I have said that it is not a good idea uh, to uh, assign the resources over here for the summary activities as well. So maybe I can just delete it, okay? Just assign the resources to the main activities and then keep these summary activities removed from here, okay? Anyway, although we can do it, but uh, to make the things more tidy, so just assign the uh, resources to the uh, main activities as well. So uh, yeah, I can. Uh, I think only up to now we have this much information, and then later on, then we can uh, continue uh, this uh, with this exercise to enter some more information. So, for example, for the duration, and then calculate the how long it will take for the project and also for the resources allocation here. You can also see that there are these two arrows over here uh, because the uh, Microsoft project is automatically scheduling it as well. And it has determined that these two activities have been uh, over uh, scheduled. But of course, later on, we will see that how we can uh, remove this uh, difficulty as well. Okay, so uh, do you have any questions about this? No questions so far. All right. Okay, so uh, that's all for uh, today then. And uh, in the uh, you have the uh, quiz two coming up uh, in the next class. So in the next class, you will give the quiz two. And uh, then from then on, we will continue. Okay. So you can prepare for your quiz two now for the next class. And then uh, your assignment one is also due today. Remember that.